This is the white key version of the Commodore cassette drive that was built into the PET 2001. I've never had one of these before, but I've been very curious about them for a while now. I have a PET, but mine is an earlier version that has the Sanyo drive instead. The reason I've been so curious about these is that there's been a lot of speculation online about where these drives came from. Just like the Sanyo drive before it, it's obvious that this was a audio tape recorded before. It has a speaker grill, battery compartment, there's a panel here where the uh, microphone jack and headphone jack used to be. So just like the Sanyo drive, Commodore seems to have modified a regular audio recorder for use in the PET. Giacomo Vernoni published a booklet not long ago on the history of the Commodore tape drives. I hope I pronounced your name right, Giacomo. My Italian's not so good. If you have any interest in these old Commodore tape recorders, I highly recommend that book. I'll put a link to it down in the description. In that book, Giacomo said that many commercial variants of this drive are known to exist, often sharing a part number or model number of CT-1020. And unlike the Sanyo drive, nobody seems to know who the original manufacturer of this tape recorder was. I have one of the Sanyo audio recorders. I got it as a companion piece to the one in my pet and as a potential source of spare parts should I ever need them. I was curious about the audio recorder version of this drive also, so I did some searching online. There's got to be at least a half a dozen different audio tape recorders made during this same time period that look, at least externally, identical to this Commodore drive, apart from the color of the plastic. So I set up some saved searches on eBay and waited for one of these to show up. And as luck would have it, one did show up right about the same time that this Commodore drive showed up for sale. I was reluctant to buy this Commodore drive at first because, like I said, I don't have a pet to put it in. But it sat there on eBay for, I think, three weeks until this other audio recorder version showed up. And my curiosity got the best of me. So I figured I could grab both of them and satisfy my curiosity and hopefully other people's curiosity by uh, doing a comparison of them. This is a Precore or Precore model C-1800R. Precore stands for Panorama Radio and Electronics Corporation. I've never heard of them. The label says custom manufactured for Precore not by Precore. That tells me this is an OEM product as well. When I first got this Commodore drive, the first thing I did was open it up to clean it. And to my surprise, I immediately recognized all the parts inside. I'm already very familiar with this Commodore C2N drive. I've taken these apart many times before, and I'm intimately familiar with the mechanism inside. So when I opened up this white keys version, I could see immediately that the mechanism in here is identical, mostly. It's also potentially interesting that this drive was made in Taiwan, and so was this Precore drive. Coincidence? Perhaps not. My guess is that all three of these were made by the same OEM. So I'm going to take a look at all three of these. I'm going to open them up and do a detailed comparison of them. And that may or may not interest you, but what might interest you is that if you are trying to repair or restore one of these drives, one of these drives might be a good potential source of spare parts. So even without opening things up, you can see similarities here. Manual lift door, five keys, uh, even though one of these is red. The speaker grill is the same, even though this one's been cut. On the back you can see that the battery compartment and ventilation grills here are the same. The position of the label space and the position of these screw holes including the mounting hole. From the front here you can see other similarities. The, uh, the, the spacing here, the keys are not centered. Commodore obviously removed the uh, jack panel and the carry handle. On the side here you can just make out the remnants of the power jack that was cut off here on this drive. 
So we can see that the case plastic is the same, even down to the molded texture. But are they the same inside? Let's find out. So obviously Commodore replaced the electronics with their own circuit board. They did the same thing in the Sanyo drive. But apart from that and the other parts which would have obviously been removed, like the speaker, they're, uh, they're pretty much the same. A couple of things that I noticed is that on the Commodore drive, the motor is mounted with some rubber vibration dampening mounts. And on this recorder, the motor's screwed down to the uh, frame hard. The other thing that I noticed right away is that the Commodore drive has an auto stop mechanism. And this drive, for some reason, the auto stop was excluded, although the uh, cutouts and mounting points for it are still there. The position of the power switch here and here. The um, fast forward and rewind lever. The key levers here. The case mounting screws here and here. There are also mounting screws here on the front, as well as the azimuth adjust hole right here and right here. Removed from the uh, plastic, from this angle you can see the, uh, the key mechanism here uh, with the latching hooks and the levers. The capstan retainer. They both have the same Canon motor. Here's a detailed shot of the circuit board. This one says CT1030. Uh, a lot of the other ones that I've seen online say CT1020. Also over here this says NP-133. Also on the speaker over here this may or may not be a date code. The ink is rubbed off and you probably can't see it under this lighting, but when I look at it closely, it seems to say 0478. So this is possibly made in 1978. If you saw the video I just did on the disassembly and reassembly of uh, this Commodore drive, you'll know that the um, the vibration dampening rubber motor mounts on this had disintegrated. Now I know that if I have that problem again, I can just mount the motor directly to the plate. Although to do that, you wouldn't be able to use these screws. You'd have to get some smaller screws because these are long enough to uh, get into the motor mechanism if you try to mount them without the spacers in there. And here's uh, the view from the top side. You can see the head assembly here. This one does not have the auto stop lever. This uh, lever trips the stop mechanism when the tape reaches the end. For some reason this was excluded on this audio recorder, but the, uh, the pivot point for it is there, so one could be added. Maybe uh, Precor just didn't want to spring for it and removed the auto stop as a cost reducing measure. The take up reel and the clutch spring, the gears, the tire, the record protect mechanism. This is the, um, the door lock to prevent you from opening the door when the unit's in play. And right here on both units, actually all three units, is a name Musashino. I did some checking on Musashino and I believe this is Musashino Corporation. There are several companies by that name, but I'll post a link to the company history of the one that I think it is. They supplied components and devices to the audio industry in Taiwan in the 1970s. So uh, yeah, these are not just similar, they're identical and completely interchangeable except for the red key. 
So if like me, your Commodore drive has a worn out tire, perhaps I could take the tire from this one and eliminate the squeak from this drive. So what about the C2N drive? Now I have this white one. I don't have a black one for my collection yet. But apart from the tape counter, the mechanism of the black one and the white one are the same. Here are the two Commodore drives side by side. And obviously they're not the same. Uh, the keys are a different color, but it's the same number of keys. The uh, take-up reel has a different clutch spring, but the same tire, the same gear mechanisms, the same record protect mechanism. The motor is different. This one's slightly smaller, but it's also still made by Canon. And just like the other two drives, it also has the name Musashino stamped right here. Now, obviously the older drive doesn't have the tape counter, but what I found interesting is that the supply reel on here actually still has the notch where the belt goes here. On the back side we see the same mechanism, the power switch, the fast forward and the rewind, Gears, this one stops. Auto stop bar here. The motor mount on the C2N has three screws, also vibration dampened. Uh, this plate where the motor is mounted on the older Commodore drive is integrated. This is just bent metal, all one piece. On this drive, it's a uh, screwed on separate piece. Another difference is this bar right here going up over the auto stop bar. This is part of the eject mechanism. On the C2N drive when it's in play mode, the stop button here is lined up with this extra notch. When you push on that, that pushes the bar to the right there and releases the catch on the play. And when you release the stop button, it snaps back and leaves room for it to go further up. Then it pushes on the eject bar. That just pushes this bar right here and moves this protrusion which pushes on a piece of plastic in the lid that allows it to spring open. The older drive doesn't have that eject mechanism so all this does is move the bar to the right to release the catch on the play or the fast forward rewind. What it does have is when you press play this whole head assembly moves forward moving this hook forward. When this hook is in the forward position it catches the lid and won't allow you to open it while the unit's in play mode. It will however allow you to open it when it's in fast forward or rewind mode. So this is just speculation on my part but uh, Seems to me that these were all made by the same company. In any case, the mechanisms are all functionally identical and the parts are all completely interchangeable. With the possible exception of the motor on the C2N, which is shorter, these taller motors may or may not fit in the case for the C2N. So I guess that's it for now. If you're interested in more detail on the parts and the mechanical workings of these drives, you can check out the video I just did on the disassembly and reassembly of this drive. I'll put a link right up there. Thanks for watching.